Hi Bulldogs, Chris Bryant here. In today's combination video boot camp and practice exam, our latest CCNA 2012 video, we just disagree or maybe not. And we're going to talk more about that in just a moment with two demos as well on live Cisco routers in today's video. A quick word about a change to my CCNA 2012 video boot camp. The best has gotten better. Every single lesson in the 22 hour course is now fully downloadable. So you can watch them online if you want to via streaming or you can download them and watch them at your leisure either way. I have the bit.ly address there for you also if you do a Google search on CCNA bootcamp sometimes we're all the top three rankings but we're definitely right up there in those first few listings uh, so come on out and see us full 30-day money-back guarantee a private online forum where I answer questions personally and the best part for you right now as always with all of my courses I put a full free hour of it online not just a few minutes and the free video content this time covers OSPF including a hub and spoke configuration which is great stuff to see so come on out and take a look now, when you're working on your CCNA, whether you're at the beginning of your studies, middle, or even close to the end, your head can just swim sometimes because you've got so many numbers you've got to keep straight. You've got a lot of default values, port costs, you know, features to memorize, that kind of thing. And as I like to say, the sheer number of numbers that you need to know for your CCNA can really make you feel kind of outnumbered. Again, especially at first. So if you're really just getting started on your studies or 2012 is the year you're going to get your CCNA, don't let that overwhelm you because it's just part of the learning process. It happens to everybody. And I am here to help you out because I know exactly how that feels because I was a beginner too, just like we all are at some point. And you're just looking at all these numbers and just trying to keep them straight. Now let's look at a very small config here. And we're going to talk about a couple of those numbers in particular today. Now, these two configs from routers 1 and 2, they're OSPF configs, obviously, and I promise you I don't have any hidden commands. I'm not trying to you know, mess with you here. But assuming that everything else is fine here, should I expect an adjacency to form with what we have on the board right there? And, of course, there's only one value that's different. So we're basically asking, does that value need to match between prospective neighbors in order to have an adjacency form? Well, let's go on the live equipment and find out. I have pre-configured this, and actually on OSPF, uh, that's a hub and spoke config. And again, you can see that as part of the free content in my, oh, excuse me, my CCNA video boot camp. But here, routers 3, let's go over to routers 1 and 2, because that's the one we're looking at right now. And you can see, you know, here's OSPF, and it says routing protocol is OSPF2. And we'll go right down to router 2 and run the sh same command. And we're running two protocols on here. We're going to talk about EIGRP in a moment. But here we can compare the output of this command on routers 1 and 2, and we see that number is indeed different. Now let's run a command that's going to show us whether we have that adjacency or not. And what's a good command to do that with with OSPF? How about show IP OSPF neighbor? And there we go. Now this is router 1 because I use the router number as the last octet in every IP address on my pods. And you can see it's got an adjacency and everything seems to be fine. So why doesn't that number have to match in OSPF? Again, we're looking at OSPF2 versus OSPF1. Why does that not have to match? Because this is a process ID number. With OSPF, we can run multiple instances or processes of OSPF on a single router. Real world, word of warning here, don't do that on a router unless it's a powerful router because OSPF is a hog with resources anyway, and the more processes you run, the harder you make in the router work. But there may be instances, especially on a hub router, where you want to run multiple instances of OSPF. This number is what we call, it's that dreaded phrase, locally significant only. It is not advertised out to any other routers because the other routers don't care. It's more of just an organizational tool than anything else. So as we see, that number does not have to match between prospective neighbors. And the reason I'm making such a big deal out of that is a lot of people think it does because you look at that and you're troubleshooting it on an exam or in your lab and you're like, okay, that's why there's no adjacency. But the process ID does not have to change. That's a good thing to know for your exam as well that it is a process ID. Now, 
What about this EIGRP config? I'm running this, let me change that number because I am running this over an Ethernet segment connecting routers 2 and 3. So with that particular config right there, would I have an adjacency and if not, why not? Let's bring the live equipment back up and take a look. We're on router 2 still and here's the output again. Let me try that again. Here's the output again of show IP protocol on router 2 and we see routing protocol is EIGRP 200 but it doesn't say anything else. And when I run show IP EIGRP neighbor it doesn't show me anything. It just says, you know, here are the neighbors of process 200, then it doesn't show me anything. So that kind of gives us a hint as to what's going on. We go over to router 3, and here's EIGRP 100. So there definitely seems to be some kind of problem. Now, even though the output of this command is going to say for process 100 for EIGRP, that's a little misleading because this is the autonomous system number. See the difference there? We, we had a process number here for OSPF. We have an AS number here for EIGRP. Now, that may kind of sound like we're picking nits there. You know, we're really splitting hairs, but they're totally different things. An autonomous system is simply a logical grouping of routers that are going to exchange EIGRP routes in this case. So, but they've got to have the same AS number. Otherwise, they're not going to form an adjacency. Now, let's just do a quick show config here. And we'll actually take this off of router 3 and put it right back on. Note the auto summary default too. If you're not familiar with that, you better be before you take the exam. So we'll take EIGRP off of there and put it right back, but with the matching AS number. And I'll go ahead and do the no auto sum just out of a habit. And then network 172. And that's it for EIGRP. We don't have to put an area number or anything like that. And over a, yeah, there we go. We're already up. So over an Ethernet segment, EIGRP is not going to take long at all. But there you saw that even though the output of the show commands here is telling us process with EIGRP, that is an AS number, and it does have to match between prospective neighbors. So one more time, just a quick review there with OSPF, that number is a process number and does not have to match between prospective neighbors as we saw. But with the EIGRP, we're talking about an autonomous system number, and that does indeed have to match. Just one of those little things you got to look out for. I just want to remind you as well, come on out and join me on Twitter. I'm on YouTube. Our blog is updated every day, and we're out on Facebook as well. And we've got plenty of free resources for the CCNA, CCNP, and coming in early 2012, Security Plus is being added to the mix as well. Thanks for watching today's video. I'm Chris Bryan, and thanks for making TBA part of your CCNA success story.